Yo guys, so today's video we're going to be talking about Foot Birthday. This is the next promo in line, we believe, uh, for FIFA 20. It should be dropping tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is historically the day of when, when Foot was basically first born. We'll call it born. Um, it was foot, foot 2009 or FIFA 2009. Foot was added as an add-on at the end of that game, uh, towards the end of that game anyway, before being incorporated into all future uh, FIFAs. And Foot Birthday celebrates this sort of this sort of launch and... It used to be a very, very good promo. In my opinion, last year's was terrible. 18's was okay. Um, but the last couple of years, as EA have moved towards this model of just rinsing people for money and coins and not really caring about the community, things have changed. You used to get a lot of free packs, a lot of uh, daily SBCs and stuff like that. That doesn't seem to be the case. However, there are a lot of options and opportunities for you to make coins from this promo. Um, first thing to note about Foot Birthday is you usually do get a loyalty pack, um, which is however many days you've logged onto the game, you tend to see a pack back in return from EA. Um, it used to be better than that, you used to get a lot more free packs. I think it was Escalating Rewards back in the day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but EA is sort of, the, 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 there's nothing on about Foot Birthday that says it's about giving back to the community. Like, happy birthday, it's more of a give us money, because it's our birthday, so give us everything you've got. Um, but the problem that I think we've got this year with Foot Birthday specifically is... We've already had a promo exactly like Foot Birthday. We had Shapeshifters. So I'm going to show you last year's team as an example. Uh, this was last year's team. You get, for example, what happens with Foot Birthday is you tend to get players moved into random positions. So Sergio Ramos as a striker. Um, Virgil van Dijk as a striker. Ibrahimovic as a centre-back. Uh, Salah left-back. They tend to move into weird positions and it's kind of cool. But Shapeshifters already did that. Well, what Shapeshifters did was it meant that positions... For example, like Marcelo has moved to a new position. I think it was Cam, if I'm not mistaken. And it sort of was meant to plug, plug gaps that Leeds had. It didn't really do that. It was just a coin rinse by EA, as always. But it was meant to plug gaps that the that Leeds had for players and stuff like that. So I'm going to find it... I find it weird to know how they're going to do it this year. But there's nothing to say that... Like, nothing's been suggested that it's going to change. It looks like it's going to be exactly how it was last year. But what things are you guys need to be thinking about for Foot Birthday this year? The first thing you need to think about is simplistically the players that are going to be in the team. Because when players are in the teams, the players tend to go up out of packs. So they tend to go up in value. That's the same when they're in Team of the Week. It's the same when they're in any other promo. Players go up in, in price. Now, Kuri Bali was in last year's team. This is his price graph. He stays sort of steadily, relatively steady. And then absolutely spikes uh, towards the end of Foot Birthday. He goes even higher and higher. The longer he's off the market for, the higher he goes up in value. So, fodder cards, specifically fodder cards, do better here. Um, cards that are used for SPCs, they can always be good for plays. The problem you have with um, investing in those cards specifically right now is that the market isn't really holding a very good value. And so, you have to be mindful of that. In previous years, you've had Icon SPCs to keep the market up. And you've needed to use a Coolie Valley, for example. So, Coolie Valley's price shoots up. Because EA made the fatal error this year of not including Icon SPCs, nothing is holding the market up. I was recording this video a minute ago, but I didn't like the way it was being recorded. But I picked up a Lautaro Martin that's for 1.3k. He's an 84 rated. And that leads me to my next point. There's obviously going to be promo packs as part of this um, promotion. Do not open them. They're not worth it. They're a scam. I can't, I can't stress that enough. FIFA points and FIFA packs are a scam. They're even more a scam now than they've ever been. Because there's nothing holding the value of cards up. So whereas in FIFA 19, 84s were 4k and 5k and comfortably in around that range for the whole game because you needed them for the Icon SPCs, this year they're not. If we show you cheapest players by position so you get an idea of it, right now, if you look at 84 rated, you can pick up 84 rated for 1.3k. Lautaro Martin is 1.4k like I just picked up. Dzeko 1.8k. Depay 1.7k. The market's not being held up. And this is partly due to the greed of EA for the fact they didn't put out Icon SPCs this year and didn't want people to get cheap Icons and brought out Icon swaps. But it's, all, it's also partly because the content's been kind of crap. It's the same old, same old. I think people have got bored of it. Don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of content and the yeah, so SPCs are good, but it's boring. It's the same thing over and over again. I borrowed 10 flashback. Oh, it's not like we've had one, not had one of those before and the same players over and over again. What will rescue this game at the moment is if EA make this, this promotion relatively interesting. They maybe pump up some players that don't have great stats and really give them a massive boost um, in the same sort of way as we've seen with sort of League SBC cards. That could be an ideal situation for them. But Fodder just doesn't hold a value. However, there are times when Fodder spikes and that is why it could be worth investing in Fodder for this promotion because there are two things you've got to think about with player SBCs. Number one, Foot Birthday SBCs tend to do really well because they're really different cool cards. For example, you've got Van Dijk at Striker and Pax. They bring out random positions, random players at different positions and people tend to like to do them, right? 
and you get card collectors and people do them. When fodder is this slow, I always say to my guys over on Twitch, buy in. If you're willing to be undersigned, buy in. Talking about undersigned, if you want to watch me do this stuff live, make sure you click the, click, click, click the link down below. Come over to Twitch. Tonight is our big stream on Thursdays. We're going to be buying into he silvers heavily, making a lot of coins very easily from silver cards. If you want to get involved in that and start learning how to trade with silvers, get involved. Click the link down below. But... If you're, if you're happy to be unassigned and you're just sort of, you play your games and you, you've got some coi coins that you think, well, I might as well invest them in something, Fodder is a play. But Fodder could be even more powerful at the moment because you've got to think about what else happens on the game. And this is why I always say to you guys, look at the wider picture. What is going on in the game at the moment? As an example, Icon Swaps is the first thing that comes to mind for me. Now, I went out and did Arturo Vidal for my squad because I couldn't really do well with La Liga squad. I didn't have that many first own players. I did Arturo Vidal and it, I crushed it once I got him because it was saving me a sub. That I could bring on someone else. Uh, but this for that card's incredible. But I went out and did him because I thought, well, why not? I wanted him anyway, so why not go and do it for this? And people that have got first, first owner teams that they want to be trying to do these icon swaps for, they will go out and do these SPCs. And that can spike the price of this fodder. It can lift the fodder up to a degree. Because number one, they're time limited. They tend to be on the game for X amount of time. So people have to do them. It's different when you've got one that sits in the players tab on squad building challenges because a lot of them tend to be there for, for the rest of the year. So that fodder doesn't really spike as much as it could do. But when you've got a player that's only there for four days, seven days, 14 days, it means people are more engaged with it and are more likely to do it. But also, you can't really lose coins. The market can't really get any lower on fodder. You've got 85s, like I say, sat there for 3.8k. So it's something to be mindful of um, go, moving forward in terms of how you invest with the fodder. Um, the other thing that I, I would be mindful of with Foot Birthday is that special cards, cards that get special cards, if they've already got a card... It can drop their price. Um, it, ha it happens every promo. But for example, if we see, I don't know, let's say we see another Griezmann, because we haven't really had one this year. Let's say we see another Greasy Grease. The chances are that it won probably wouldn't affect his inform if he got enough of a boost. But if he got a, like maybe a plus one or a plus two on his current inform price, his inform probably would drop a little bit in value. And that, and that tends to happen. It tends to be true the majority of the time. So far this year, that's what's happened with a lot of the cards. It isn't true always. I can't stress that enough. There are times where... The card's so different from the other card, it doesn't really have an impact. Van Dijk last year comes to mind with me. He had a striker card that didn't really tend to impact his, um, his centre-back card much last year whatsoever. But just be mindful of that. Again, keep an eye on price. If you've got a special card or one of these guys that might get a pack, just think about that. What else can we think about for this promo? And the, the big thing that I always tell my guys to do is invest in SBC cards. And when I say SBC cards, I mean cards that are going to be used as part of daily SBCs. Now, we used to get a daily SPC every day. EA, again, have gone away from doing that because they, they know now how addictive packs are and how addictive packs are. And I think, they, I think EA know this method and the way that Ultimate Team currently works is coming to an end. I think a lot of governments are wising up to it. I think they're realising it's gambling. So what EA are doing now is starving you of packs so you get as much money out as you they possibly can and you go and buy FIFA points because you're going to want to open packs. The daily SPC hasn't been daily recently. It's been every two days now. But what you can go and do is right now, go up and pick pick up cards, like right back from La Liga, for example, that are gold, 550, 400 coins. You can go and pick these guys up relatively easily, relatively cheaply right now, and they're going to make you value. As soon as the SBCs get released, as soon as all these SBCs get released, they're going to go up in value because it will be something like an 85-rated chemistry, 85-rated, well, 85-chem team with right, right backs and wingers. Right backs, left backs, wingers are the best guys to go for. Like, these ones have just been brought up straight away. Um... And it always, always works. There's a guy in my chat called Lewis, and he does. this is the main way he trades. Buy-in, right-backs, left-backs, fodder, all that sort of stuff. Just sits unassigned on it for ages. And then when a promo drops, he goes bang, sells it all up and doubles his coins. If he puts 500k in, he gets a million coins out. And it's a really effective way to just, just stock your club up. Even if you bought one of everyone that's on the market, just stock your club up. And then when it launches, you make some coins out of it because the rare player pack comes out and everyone rushes to do it. If you can get, like, at discard price, up with the right back, for example, Bender. I don't know what Bender is at the moment. But he's one that always sees a rise. Um, it's Lars Bender, isn't it? He always sees a rise when right backs are required for Bundesliga. He always jumps up. Right now, he can be picked up for 750 Not far off discard price for him. Like, it's not, it's not rocket science with this stuff. And he, he will go up in value. Especially if the rating of the team is 80, 81 rated. He'll go up in value for the daily SBCs. Um, another one, Alonso. Marcus Alonso, he usually is a bit more expensive than this, than this card, but let's have a little look. Yeah, he's kind of at the moment. He's high at the moment. I probably wouldn't invest in him at this price. Um, but Marcus Alonso, if during the 6pm lightning rounds he drops off, it could be worth buying into him because, again, he will see a rise if he's needed for a daily pack SBC. 
And that's is so, so, so important to be thinking about it like that. The final thing to think about with foot birthday though is just be mindful with your coins. Just be mindful of what you're doing. I've seen a lot of time recently, EA are bringing out these SBCs for Shamrock Rovers, Shamrock Rovers for example, from yesterday. And the players spike for the first 10 minutes and everyone panic sells and they come down. Just be mindful you're not buying in too high on all, all of your cards. But also be mindful that this game still has a little bit left to run now. We don't know what's going on with Team of the Season. We don't know what's going on with the rest of the game in terms of the actual real-life football being played and how it's going to affect promos. But just be mindful you don't want to be buying into all these cards now because it's not like last year. I have a feeling that Team of the Season is going to come later. Again, we would like some, some communication from EA with that, but we're not going to get much. One other thing that I have seen in, in this is Footwatch had tweeted out this, that the Rare Players Pack has been called the Rare Players Pack Plus. This is new coming out. If you're going to buy into fodder, when these ones with a minimum 84 come out, that could be a good shout. Because if 84s are cheap enough as it is, they're only going to go down lower as time goes on with these 84s coming out. Unless, obviously, there's an SBC that EA want to do. One other thing, the final thing, literally the final thing to talk about, is I do believe we are going to see an Icon SBC at some point soon. Number one, both the Prime and Mid are in the code already. So it just means EA's just got to drop the SBC itself. But this time last year, EA start to go, do you know what, let's just start throwing mids in there and primes in there and whatnot. And I just feel like if you buy into fodder, there's a chance that that will rise either way with that. But again, just be on the lookout, be mindful that EA is still, there's still a little bubble under the surface of Pez. It's not, it's not the same hype that was for Pez two weeks ago when Kurt first got banned. But EA is still having to throw stuff at this game now and try and engage the community. I mean, they're engaging in the way that EA do, which is, which is half-heartedly. But it's something just to be mindful of as we go into this game. It could be important, an important way to look at um, this, this whole promo is that actually you could set yourself up. If nothing good comes out and cars keep going down in price, you could set yourself up for a next promo for a big, big content drop from EA as time moves on. But that's going to be the end of the video, lads. If you are new, as always, please do subscribe, round, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the, like the video, all that good stuff. But for now, lads, I'm out. Peace out. I will speak to you soon.